Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors Channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you from a lovely little Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's early. We're going to talk about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and what's going on in the altcoin market uh, or some of the degenerative picks, uh, specifically XLR and um, and the BitTensor Tau token. We'll talk about those and some price targets. So let's jump right into it with Bitcoin on the daily following up. As we said, uh, this was the pivot to hold at about 35.3. It has held sloppily at that. And just when you think all is fine and well, well, uh, Bitcoin on the four hour is still making those higher highs and higher lows. Got some people trapped there. Want to see if there was any kind of a weekend trap for Bitcoin and then coming in to the U.S. market. What's happened here in the first couple of hours of trading the dead gap zone. So they sent it to the downside, threw it back to the upside. And are we going to get a W or an M formation for a reversal? Just when I talk about the weekend uh, price action where people tend to get trapped, well, um, you're looking at this kind of a zone right here and then a bit of a breakout to start out the weekend. Um, so, sends it up, retests, and it looks like continuation to the upside. Uh, additionally, on the four hour time frame, we did take out the wick. There's what we talked about last week, uh, Friday. And um, that's confirming this as a higher low and another bullish wick right here. This is what you want to see if you're bullish. And pretty much as long as we don't take out this wick um, or this box. Now, remember, uh, Bitcoin likes to have some trappy price action. So. Uh, wouldn't be unforeseen to throw it down in this box one more time, maybe even all the way down to this pivot right here, uh, this last four-hour candle. But as long as we're kind of uh, holding this position sideways and up, I'd say generally things are looking uh, still bullish for Bitcoin. We had a very strong weekly close. Uh, well, is that very strong, kind of a hangman-type candle? Um Momentum is still up there as long as we're above 34.4 this week. So getting close there. Are we going to get one more push is the question. And where does the invalidation come? And again, that's on the daily back below this, you know, taking out this middle wick here, probably good enough for me or just that last major horizontal is probably good enough for me. And then I'd be looking for this candle to get recovered back here. And uh, kind of judge it from there for Mr. Bitcoin. Let's check out Ethereum really quick. As uh, I was just saying, right when you think everything looks fine and dandy, then it puts in a lower high and a lower low on the four hour time frame, but not a daily reversal yet. And in fact, Ethereum Bitcoin chart is still looking bullish. So what do we got here? Uh, rejection. That could just be the rejection on the first pass. I'm not letting uh, my, my, yeah, but generally speaking, you know, above this wick is probably going to be good for Ethereum um, for a little bit more upside. And perhaps we come and, you know, fulfill the uh, massive ascending triangle breakout, which could you say that it's officially broken out on the weekly not yet. I'd probably want to wait for that closure uh, back above 2142, and that will kind of give you that official signal move for um, for Ethereum. All right. Um, bot just went off. Might as well take a look at Chainlink as we're going to talk about XLR, a direct competitor to Chainlink and layer zero, but uh, while well, we got link up here, you know, generally that was our target. Have we gotten there? Close enough is close enough, but I do imagine that people are still going to be flying into 
uh, chain link as it's kind of been one of the stronger coins for this whole um, breakout session. And people are just going to naturally gravitate towards the stronger coins. Don't don't fight the daily, uh, you know, the massive bullish uptrend, um, even though things are getting tired. And I would like to see Chainlink come all the way down to this area for perhaps a the next major buying opportunity. Um, but generally, you know, holding above this area is going to be good for Chainlink. Um, does look like it is perhaps putting in that lower high on the four hour. Um alongside some of the other coins. Uh, actually, that's a slightly higher on a closing basis, maybe on a wick basis, but sideways consolidation. All right, now let's talk about XLR. XLR, which I'm going to compare it to BitTensor Tau. Why? Not because they have anything to do with each other, but simply it's the narrative-driven uh token and as ai coins were very narrative driven going into that chat gbd conference um, now there's also some news but I'll, I'll get into that in a second so what is xlr xlr claims to deliver secure cross-chain communication for web3 the project provides decentralized network and tools to help builders of decentralized applications with seamless cross-chain communication through its protocol suite tools and apis xlr features three core components a decentralized network a software development kit of protocols and apis and a set of gateway smart contracts for cross chain connectivity axl is the native token of the xlr network the protocol also supports cross chain transfers of several native tokens Via their wrapped ERC-20 versions, including AVAX, Ethereum, FTM, Glimmer, or Moonbeam, and Matic. So um, what else is important to know about XLR? Essentially, they, um, well, JP Morgan, uh, JP Morgan's blockchain division, Onyx, has collaborated with industry startups to create a proof of concept under Project Guardian demonstrating how tokenization can revolutionize financial asset management by enabling fund managers to tokenize portfolios on various blockchain networks. So this is exactly the narrative we've been talking about with our clients for a very long time, that tokenization is the future. JP Morgan, oddly enough, Onyx Division, they're going into it deep and the project focusing on interoperability and privacy involved blockchain platforms like Providence Blockchain, Onyx Digital Assets, Avalanche, and contributions from XLR and Oasis Pro with transactions conducted in a permission manner for enhanced security. I'll leave a link in the description below there for this one. Additionally, I heard Singapore is developing their, and I wish I had the article, uh, their kind of central bank digital currency using XLR as a bridge um, with Chainlink and something else. So very new, new, uh, not very new, but very new token launched in, what is that, October 2022. It is below its all-time high very similar to how, I don't know if this is a good chart for it. No. Yeah. Very similar to how uh, BitTensor Tau, the AI coin was below its all time high. Um, so I want to give just a quick thought here and you guys can let me know what you, you guys think below, or if you enjoy some of this altcoin stuff, but um, we call this one out. <clears throat> Right here, um, I said, look, this is a W formation. And um, if we do crack the middle wick here, I'm looking for this one to be in a blue sky breakout and then price discovery. Parabolic blow off tops are gonna come in at the 4236. What do you know? We are tapping that right now. 
So the question is, do you do it based off of the wicks or the candle bodies? If you're a little more conservative, you probably use the candle bodies. Um, so, you know, again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but this product, Bitenzer Tau, is like the decentralized chat GBT. And with Sam Altman getting recruited to uh, Microsoft, by the way, great article here from Ted Talks Macro, dollar liquidity is coming into the market. That is when you tend to uh, see the bullish market return for crypto. But um, just a quick idea here. So essentially um, what, I'm, what I'm looking at here is from the all-time high to the all-time low, you can see the first major rally cracked up to the 786, rejected back down to the 236 and that you know is when the second leg of the w happened and i do imagine xlr is going to pop off um, but as you can see it is just making its first pass at the 786 right there using the candle body closing basis now um where can this one get going i mean First target at 212, which would be your parabolic blow off top if we do take out the wick. So one step at a time. I mean, typically you just, it's not going to go straight up, right? So you want to see some kind of a grab the range and then a push higher and then grab that range and then a push higher and then grab that range. But uh, if we start to get invalidated, your first warning sign is going to be, well, first warning sign is below the, uh, the 618 and uh, your second one is right there. And essentially, um, yeah. So if you start to see invalidation below that 57 cent mark, I would I would uh, be looking to get out of that one. I did happen to catch it a bit lower ahead of some news. We brought it up on our channel. If you did enjoy it, make sure you smash the like button and uh, write a comment below. Um, if you heard us talking about this one a few weeks ago or just a week ago, I, I want to say. But so there's two scenarios I think could play out. One is, um, you know, we reclaim the uh, the all time high and just go for it now as the news is you know coming out. J.P. Morgan, there's there's a few other news things that are kind of out there with Ondo Finance unveils their bridge to move U.S. Treasuries backed USDY stablecoin across chains. And what are they going to do? Uh, collaborated with Axelar to introduce the bridge on the cross-chain solution. Good, to, good time to point out it's a $320 million market cap. Um, direct competitor with Chainlink and net zero. Net zero, just curious. So 24-hour trading volume at $7 million. So... It's starting to tick up and the circulating supply, 470 million, total supply of 1.1 billion and the fully diluted market cap, 750 million. Um, so comparing it to Bittender in circulation, coins in circulating supply, of foreign, so about 25% uh, is in circulation right now versus Bittender Tau which circulating supply, it's about 25% as well. Interesting. But you can see the total volume now is at 22 million. And when this first this coin first came out, it was only listed on BitGet and Mexi. And by the way, uh, Mexi, there's a link in the description below if you did wanna get this coin, um, you know, maybe on a pullback, or some of the other new coins, there is a referral link below. I don't get anything out of it. It's highly, um, uh, it's just the exchange with the lowest fees. And I think some of the best user features um, out there. So again, you know, be careful with what you do out there, but just wanna make that known. As we jump on to the next couple of coins, I wanted to bring up Neutron is one. Uh, supposedly Neutron, this guy right here. Again, we're talking about micro cap 
Um, small time, you know, this is listed in like the danger zone section or the new innovations section. What I do like about it is we took out the all time high. We had the pullback higher low and higher lows, higher lows. And um, if the market cap and the narrative behind this, that everybody from the cosmos, the cosmos um, chain is going to be migrating over to this technology because it's still so early. Um, Neutron is you know, 24 million trading volume, uh, $100 million market cap. So you can see some players are actually jumping in. And I do this, think this one uh, could could perhaps break out. So um, before I, I run on my narrative with XLR, I uh, wanted to give my, my... So if it plays out like BitTens or Tau, right, the uh, W is going to look like this, which is going to be... Something like this hits the 786, comes back down. And then once we take out this area, then it's going to be the new all time highs. Um, that's probably the better, better route for everybody. But um, if we can get a daily closure back above uh, 86 hold and then make a shot at that one, I would be I would be making uh, looking for this one to just break out. Kind of like this option a little bit better. Um, of course, it's more fun for everything to go to the moon right now. Um, okay. So we talked about Tau. Um, where am I looking to exit this one? I just want to, uh, you know, wick to wick. 410. 410. So that's 25% higher than we're at right now. Um, or 40% higher than we're at right now. So I'm just thinking about that as an area of interest to uh, take some profits off. But while the AI narrative is running right now and Sam Altman just got recruited to Google and we know ChatGPT and, or he got recruited to Microsoft, um, that's that's bad for, you know, everybody, you know. Um, not what I would call good. And I'd say that shines light on a decentralized chat GPT. To be fair, I think all their stuff isn't work yet, probably won't work yet. So this is probably going to be um, a bit of a pump and dump at some point. All right, that's it out of me today, guys. Um, we'll go over some more coins tomorrow. Let me know what you guys want to hear below. Uh, if you have any questions, hope you have a blessed and highly favored rest of your day. So we went over, I think we got everything. Um, I will be back tomorrow with some more crypto price updates. Take care.